oh, look at this Tommy Bahama bunk bed. Right? It's catchy, right? And my kid's name's Tommy. It's catchy. Why, it's been, why were they selling them for so much, though? Like, say, like, something... Shut up. Shut up. L- look at me. You gotta stop. Listen to what I'm saying. A bunk bed. Do you know bunk beds sell for, like, $50,000, $100,000, $200,000, $200, half a million dollars? Yeah. No, you see what I'm saying? Because you found a website that has designer stuff on it that costs a lot of money. Doesn't yeah. mean anything. It just means somebody, like... Somebody's making fun of how poor you are. You didn't know dressers. Some people buy dressers for $50,000. Yeah. I mean, think about it, the Wayfair scandal. It's not really a scandal about trafficking children. It's it's the middle class making fun of the poor class. All these people think they're middle class. And then you speak about the Wayfair scandal. And the rich people go, look how stupid these people are. Yeah. Like, I've never seen a dresser that didn't cost more than $20,000. I've never seen a bed room set that didn't cost $250,000. And they just laugh at you. Yeah. Well, you're thinking it's something. You see what I'm saying? Somebody tricked you into being the butt of a joke. Yeah. And, like, I was watching another conspiracy theory that, like, you know about Epstein and stuff. Yeah. But does that make sense? Let's cover that Wayfair thing in real life. If you don't know rich people pay a lot of money for furniture, some mean person can make you the butt of a joke. So you start talking about Wayfair, thinking that's trafficking children or whatever. And everybody's making fun of how poor you are and how uneducated you are because you don't know the true cost of furniture. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I see now that. So now you're going around talking about a sex ring while everybody's like, look at how uneducated this person. He's using a name of a dresser to talk about a sex ring. Look at how poor, look how uneducated poor people are. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense, makes sense. Look at how uneducated poor people are. There's fucking poor people today talking about furniture being associated with sex trafficking because they don't know anyways yeah sorry yeah, you're good uh and then i was watching another thing on the epstein island blah 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 that they used they they recorded like all the stuff and then they would uh manipulate and use it against like the hierarchies and like the one percent i believe that because that's what the military does in my in my neighborhood mm-hmm it's absolutely fa- so uh, every time i it's so crazy i wake up from being hurt, and I don't mean like I just woke up, like I slowly get myself better, and I'm like, hey man, they're fucking recording this shit, Yeah. and they're like, yeah, we don't want anybody to know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like we're, they're recording it, that means it's going to like terrorists and cartels and shit, <laughs> yeah. we don't want anybody to know, I'm like, fuck man, how many people have they set up, <laughs> yeah, I think about like how many, how many people, and how many people have to like, Agree to not speak about it so more people can be set up. Yeah. I, I feel like there's... There's so much things that, like, the government knows that they just don't tell us. Like, they have so much secret things going on and stuff like that that they just secret. don't tell Here's us. Here's the thing. The government does whatever your parents and grandparents tell them to do. Yeah. The problem is, you never check to see if your parents and your grandparents are telling telling the government to only do the right thing and there's yeah. the problem everybody assumes their parents and their grandparents would never allow the government to do something bad yeah. and that's that's a huge problem not only do your parents and your grandparents allow the government to do bad things they expect them to yeah your grandparents right now and your parents expect the government to get into a massive unfixable debt So that you have to fix it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like your grandparents and your grandparents expecting the government to allow a company to give you cancer so they can make some dividends later on in life. Right? Your parents and your grandparents expecting the government to allow corporations to give a bunch of people heart disease. Mm-hmm. I was, I was, I was watching a thing, uh, an art, or I wasn't watching it. I was reading an article. On how red dye uh, increases chance of cancer, and all these red dye products are out there, and like no one cares about. I think they've already. Well, here's the thing. I read that too, so I, I can't. That red dye exaggerated my aunt. I can't remember. So there's red dye. So I'm glad you brought that up. I read that link from red dye and cancer, and the reason nobody cares about it is because it's not the red dye. It's the red dye is mixed with sugar. So now we're gonna. Red, red dye is linked to cancer. And you go, what? okay, linked. What's the rest of the links? You take the red dye, you mix it with sugar, 
and then it leads to cancer. Without the sugar, red dye doesn't lead, lead to cancer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's the, 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 the trick is that, what well, you know, all of these things are linked to cancer, linked. And they go, well, what's the missing link? Sugar, don't say anything. Yeah, my, that's what my dad says. Sugar is like the biggest causing cancerous thing out there. He's telling the truth. Yeah. So sugar and, and, and sugar and red dye is linked to cancer. Sugar and aspartame, cancer. Sugar and cooked meat, cancer. Sugar and fruits and vegetables, cancer. Sugar and soda pop, cancer. Sugar and everything. You go, well, how about those other things? Are they linked to cancer when you move the sugar? Nope. Everything is linked to cancer when you add sugar. When you remove sugar, 90% of the stuff we tell you causes cancer no longer causes it. Yeah. It only causes it when combined with sugar. Yeah. And I and I was uh like the big the big corporations and stuff. I I was reading something that they there it was a uh, it was a quote. They're uh they're taking one step at a time. They're not looking at the whole staircase. So they're doing everything right now. But in fifty years they'll be dead, and they don't care about what's going on then. Now we're getting somewhere, right? I'm gonna gather as much money and live like a king now. Yeah. Because and when I die, it'll be your problem, not mine. And yep. And uh, I just that's where Congress is today. Yep, I was I was watching that and I was like, "Damn, this world is really tricked up." Like the big one percent, all they all they want is money. They don't care about even they're even though they're going to give money to charity, they don't care that it's going to charity. And even though they probably have the cure for cancer, they're just holding it back because. I'm, like, well, there's not, here's the thing: a cure for cancer. Don't eat sugar, and you don't get cancer. Do you need a cure if you never get something? Exactly. See what I'm saying? Like the government's hiding the cure for cancer, or so and so's. Are they really hiding it, or is there not a cure for cancer? Because you just don't eat sugar and you don't get it. I don't need the cure for cancer if I never get it. Yeah. That's See what true. I'm saying? Yeah. And I I thought it was kind of weird. Like I was like, there's so much good arguments for both sides, but you know, like clearly there's a one side winner. You know what I mean? Like, say, they do have the cure for cancer, but if you don't have cancer, you know, it just keeps going back and back. And I just, I thought that was re really fascinating that uh, they have the cure for cancer, but they get so much money for uh, research to find the cure There's for not cancer. A cure. You're not listening to what I'm saying. There's no cure for cancer. It's a, you have to grow up. There's not, there's, there's no cure for cancer. Not one thing. Cancer and red, red, sugar and red dye causes cancer. Well, that's one type. Sugar and cooked fruits and vegetables causes cancer. Well, that's one type, right? There's no cure for cancer because there's more than one cancer. But you can stop oh. eating sugar and prevent it. Yeah, I understand what you're saying now. Yeah, there's, that's where pro people are like. There's like the government's probably hiding the cure for. There's not really a cure for cancer because there's different types. But what we can do is prevent you from getting it, which is even better. Okay. Uh, Martin, it was good talking to you. I'm a big fan. I love your work. I love God bless. You. Thank you for your kindness. You have a great day. Yeah. You have a good one. wants to come on. Go live. Hey, Martin. How's it going? Good. So, I, I just wanted to I'm I just wanted to say I'm a huge fan. <laughs> I think you're a really funny guy. Hmm. I try. Yeah. <laughs> what mm -hmm. what strived you to do all this to make this account to tell everyone your story? To Yeah, a lot of people are getting murdered. Yeah. <laughs> so you're asking in in real life uh some men have been trying to get me to to be recorded killed. So let's get to the fucking nitty gritty. Since since I met my neighbors Al and Jerry, 
uh, and, and some other men. There's a guy who showed up. He's in the military or the sheriffs or something in my other house in in, in South Hill, Puyallup on the other side. The, the, this guy and Jerry and Al showed up later and an African guy later, but originally two Caucasian men have been trying to get me to murder people and record it for years. Mm. Forcible entries, torturing children, raping women, anything they can do to get me to murder some people. And um, I keep, you know, what, what am I doing this for? Because, you know, the adults might not pay attention, but children have to go, well, there they go again, trying to get Martin to kill some people. Yeah. Why do they, why does, why does Jerry need Martin to kill somebody so the police can kill him? Now we're getting somewhere. Why do the police need me to do something to take your life so they can take mine? Why are they so hell-bent on trying to take my life? Right. What do I know? Why are the Why is the military, my neighbors, Jerry and this a guy who showed up to my house over and over again, so hell-bent on getting me to, tr trying to get me to attack the police so they can take my life? Why for decades have men been trying, to, using a rape, torture, Right. atrocities, war crimes. Why are they so hell-bent on trying to get me, or trying to get themselves recording me killing some people that they set up? Mm -hmm. Dude, my fucking neighbor Jerry, you kill my wife, kill my wife. They'll just take her body away like they do the rest of the bodies. And I'm like, what other bodies, first of all? Right. And why are you, why are you trying to set it up so that I premeditated me kill your wife and you can document it? Right. What are you going to do with the video? Like, hey, look, I told you Martin was a killer. He killed my wife. Are you going to tell everybody? Now I set it up. For years, I've been trying to bait him into killing my wife. Right. Right? And I was like, someone, what? for decades, they've been trying to get me to kill people. Mm -hmm. Women, children. So what? what makes them want to go after you like this? They're fucking, well, I'm a witness, and that's how we're going to get somewhere. I'm a witness to some homicide and some trap, some old men having sex with animals and children. Right. <laughs> right? Yeah, I get it. <laughs> I'm the witness. So they're trying to screw you over? Well, I'm the witness. Yeah. If I die, I'm no longer the witness, am I? If, you, if I can't speak to you, I'm no longer the witness. And literally, literally taking women in my life and telling, in front of me, raping them in front of me and telling me, kill them, or we'll be here to rape her tomorrow. Kill her, or we'll be here the day after that. Just kill her. Mm. Kill her. Then why hasn't he killed her, man? They fucking, they always kill him. And I'm like, just listen, like, what? They always kill him. How many how many people have you fucking done this to? Right. <laughs> <laughs> The fucking police swatted. He didn't blow. They come in my house after the police swatted me and torturing me again. He didn't fucking kill the police. What the fuck is going on? They usually blow, shoot the. They usually it's over already. He's the person like literally out of their own mouth. The person's usually already attacked the police. Mm -hmm. Like, listen, like I'm listening. Like you guys, over and over again. So you can record me killing people. And the only thing you can say is, he didn't kill anybody this time. Fuck, we're going to have to try again. Yeah. Or he didn't kill who he wanted to be killed. Mm -hmm. right, whoever he, we wanted him to kill, he didn't kill. We're just going to have to keep torturing. More rape, more homicide, more more threats of, of babies being killed. Hopefully we'll get this mass shooter, This, this we'll get this bombing to take place. It's fucking nuts. Yeah. Like, is there no fucking, there's those people ask me, where's the honest military? Because there's women and children in my community that have to watch this shit. Now we get somewhere. You imagine me as a representative of the military, brutally raping and torturing your wife in front of witnesses so that you can go kill some police officers? Right. What yeah. kind of legacy am I leaving for the American military doing that? Not a good one, am I? Am I? Yeah. Fucking yeah. cold-blooded murderers. Cold-blooded rapists. The worst of the worst. Yeah, well, you're doing the right thing. I don't know. We'll see. 
you say that. I don't know. We'll find. We'll fucking see. But it, it's it's hard. I've been bucket like I wake up every few years. I'm like, hey man, I used to do a job, and the police would arrest all the bad guys. And I switched over to the Pierce County Sheriff's Department. Mm-hmm. And the bad guys that showed up were the fucking police. The people who fucked the children and the animals were the military and the police. And everybody went, oh, never mind. Here's where we'll get somewhere. Everybody went, no, never mind, we're done. Oh, man. The police are allowed to do that. The military is allowed to do that. And they go, no, they're not. No, they are. No, they're not. Nobody's allowed to do those fucking atrocities. And they said, no, the police and the military in your community are allowed to do those things. Nobody stops them. So, children, let's check. This doesn't seem, this seems out fucking rageous. This seems outlandish. Nobody's allowed to rape and pillage American citizens and do this shit. And they're like, no, it's acceptable. It's part of, re- what would you learn if you followed me? That was a real fucking statement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The military, they kill innocent soldiers so some of them can have sex with animals. So They kill innocent soldiers so some of them can fuck children. It's what happens. It's accept- It's like common knowledge. Like I start researching this stuff like, you guys all know about this? They're like, yeah. And nobody did shit. Like, nope, nobody does anything. They're fucking crazy. Military, they just fucking kill people. Like, everybody right. fucking knows. They're like, yeah, everybody knows. Like, it's acceptable. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah this is what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, I fuck. Agree. <laughs> like what? It's like your fucking job. You gave it no like. You promised not to rape, pillage, and murder. But yep, I swear to my God, my country, and my family. <laughs> I didn't fucking mean it. <laughs> it was a joke. Yeah, <laughs> it's a fucking joke. And and, 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 I, and in real life, I proved the oath that the American military in my community gave. To protect women and children was a fucking joke. Yeah. And that's what's scary. Right? Reality. When it comes down to actually giving your fucking word to take care of me and my wife, which just represent a larger group of women and children, it was a fucking joke. Era of tech, the Rangers, the fucking SEALs, they taught me. It's a fucking joke. Right. It's a fucking joke. So that they can have more cocaine. They can have more sex. It's a fucking joke. Their honor. Their word is a fucking joke. And they didn't They didn't allow me to say that. They showed the world. They said, look at the Airborne Rangers. Our oath is a fucking joke. It's something we pretend to have in the spotlight. Look right. at us for seals. Our oath is something we pretend to have in the spotlight. What happens when nobody's looking? Oh, we don't actually have a fucking oath. We don't have honor. We don't have integrity. That's a lie. Mm-hmm. Well, how long has it been a fucking lie? Right. Well, you're exposing them. How long has it been a lie? Right? <laughs> Think about it. I'm exposing them. Imagine the people that had to fucking witness and watch. Mm-hmm. Imagine all the people that died for that shit. You imagine you, you're a kid growing up and somebody tells you your dad died of an insurgency attack in Afghanistan. And I show up later on and say, you want to see a video of your, your dad being dropped on American soil? Mm-hmm. Yeah, his chain of command sent him there to die so they could have sex with kids. Your dad didn't die protecting the country. Some old men wanted to fuck some animals. And, and your dad was the bait. Yeah. That's that's just not that's that's fucking heavy, and yeah. people don't understand. That's he- like I thought my dad was a war hero, and somebody's literally can walk up with a video right now and show me my dad being dropped on American soil mm-hmm. for so some men could have a gangbang with some animals and children. Right now, we can give you the video and show you that, or it can be given to the enemy. Who needs more recruits? Yep. Right? We can give it to the enemy who needs more recruits. It's just nuts. Yeah. Anyway, no, I talk about my wife says, but we're not going to get started over anymore. So when they, you know, they, people keep saying that. Yeah. And, and, and the devil, like, we don't, we don't want the truth out at all costs. 
We like the ability, the Rangers, we like the ability to create suicide bombers and mass shooters to plague the world. Mm -hmm. That's power. Right. Suicide bombers and mass shooters, that's global fear. Yeah. That's global power. That's not my just, and people don't understand that. That's global power. That's that's the kind of power you you, you don't you don't understand, yeah. right? And and, and the uh, originally, I guarantee you, the Airborne Rangers went in to stop that kind of thing, right? You think about power; it corrupts. The Airborne Rangers going fucking look at these people creating these suicide bombers and mass shooters. We got to stop them at all cost. And one Ranger looking up in the air of Tet, going, "You see the power? You see the fear in these people's eyes?" Mm -hmm. you sure you want to stop it you don't want to join it look at the fucking power look at the power look at the fear in these people's eyes They're, that fear is not of me that fear of power is not of me having the power but I want it I want them to look at me with such power mm -hmm. right there goes a rabbit Right, and that—that's literally where, where where I think about how this shit started. Where, like, why are they doing it in the states now? Where do they learn that shit? Overseas, right? You learn that as an American military raping and torturing, gaslighting and choking people out to set up, create sex slaves. It's it's real unconventional warfare tactics, psychological operations to to disrupt a foreign country, and now they're employing those tactics on American citizens. Because the power, right? We told you these things are done by men who wield power corruptly. It corrupted them. And we sent you there and then you went, ooh, look at the power this gives me. Hmm. Yeah, I know and the that, type. Yeah, and that's where we're at right now. Look at the power it gives me. And that, that, that's it. You think about it, though, right? You get some, you get some, some corrupt members of the military make it in the ranks, and they get to see that shit unfold, and go, "Well, wow, yeah, <laughs> right." All those people were scared, mm -hmm. and that that fear led to power. <sighs> I want the power. Yeah, and they think they can get away with it. Power. They want the power. I mean, you think about the power. To control humanity is so tempting. They publicly take victims into, like literally, raping me and my wife and telling me if I want it to stop, I need to kill her. And then parading around, uh, us around in a Walmart, hoping, you know, the shit would go off in a Walmart. Yeah. They didn't, they didn't make sure they took me to a base where all the military was around, right? Mm -hmm. They gave me knives and weapons and took me public places. Yeah. It took me a fucking zoo. Here. Kill everybody. At the, you know, have a black, have a meltdown. Hopefully your autism will go meltdown. You'll kill a bunch of people at a zoo. And then we'll show up stopping a terrorist attack. We stopped Martin the terrorist at a zoo. Mm. Well, why would I be upset at a zoo for you to stop a terrorist attack at a zoo? Right now he's somewhere for people that are paying attention. How could they have stopped a terrorist attack at a zoo? Right. Why would I attack anybody with my wife at a zoo? And this is now we're getting somewhere. Not having the ability to pay attention. Right. A fucking military men, fake war heroes, participating in rape and torture and homicide, and then parading the victims around like heroes. Mm. Now, right, I do those things to you and your sister, and then I parade your sister around to at the zoo, like I'm the hero. Right. While somebody's goading you into showing up and killing a bunch of people at the zoo and stopping me from parading your sister around. I already know you might come, so I won't get killed. Your sister might die. A lot of innocent civilians at the zoo will die. But nobody, and, and, and you're going to die for sure when the police show up and take your fucking life for killing everybody at the zoo. And nobody's going to know. I set it up so that you could kill people at the zoo. I baited you. Mm -hmm. I baited you. I tried to get you to kill people in public. And but 
I don't know. You didn't fucking do it. It didn't work at the fucking zoo. Now I gotta take you to Walmart. It doesn't work at Walmart. I gotta take you, I gotta take you to Northwest Trek. It doesn't work there. Where can we get this to fucking happen? It's not fucking working. <laughs> Think about that shit. It's not he hasn't killed anybody yet. And he can't kill himself. It's not working. He gotta come back. Mm-hmm. You know, it never happened. It's all fake stuff. It never happened. No. Nope. Yeah. Right. But that's exactly what the enemy wants wants the chain of command to say. It never happened. Right. Ain't that right. weird? Right. The, the in real life, the military actually fulfilling the orders of the enemy, which seems kind of weird. When the enemy says cover this shit up so we can create more victims and gather more counter intel. The chain of command in America is supposed to go, no, we stopped that shit. But they, I mean, think about it. They went, yes, sir. Cover it up. Yes, sir. I mean, fucking falling, taking orders from foreign countries. That's nuts. But how how does a foreign country have the power to give orders to the senior officers of the American military? Their job is to serve the citizens. Their job is to serve the American public. So how does a foreign country supersede that chain of authority? To give orders, right? What 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 does a foreign country have to have on the chain of command so that they can tell the the the, the, the people in charge of the military what to fucking do? Yeah, how did you get did. that? Authority. You see did. Yeah, how did they get it? How did you uh-huh. get? That? It's never assigned to the right person. Authority. <laughs> Well, but, but yeah, it's never assigned to the right person. But you think about the man, people who do have authority being mm-hmm. yes men of. So their job is to protect American citizens, protect American soil at all costs, right? Right. Then they're actually fulfilling the orders of foreign intelligence agencies. A foreign intelligence agency. You think about it, the Russia's intelligence agency. Mm-hmm. I need you guys to cover up rape and homicide and sex trafficking by the American military at all costs so we can gather as much counterintelligence as possible. So that's the that's the that's the 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 command coming out of Russia right now. China, North Korea. I need you guys to cover up the sex trafficking and drug dealing and shit like like that from the American military for as long as possible. Mm-hmm. It's valuable counterintelligence. I need you to cover it up for as long as possible. And then the, um, the president and, and the, the people in America going, we need to uncover this shit as quickly as possible. We need to bring this shit to light as quickly as possible. And the chain of command going, follow, listen to what America has asked us to do, listen to what the president has asked us to do, or follow the orders from Russia, North Korea, and China. And what did the military do? They took their orders from Russia. <laughs> in real life. To kids today, look, the American military and the, the American is telling them these people, solve this crime, fix it as quickly as possible. China, North Korea, and Russia are telling at the same time, cover it up so we can gather as much counterintelligence as possible. What did they do? Did they follow the orders coming from the U.S. government or did they follow the orders coming from Russia? In real life, what orders did they follow? Russia. Russia, right. And like people, it's fucking eye opening. In my community today, the American military showing up, getting their orders from Russia. Right. That seems fucking backwards, right? Because their orders from America, when they show up to a town or a house, is to protect the citizens at all costs, right? Mm-hmm. Right. The orders from Russia, right? The, now we're getting somewhere. Vladimir Putin yep. gave orders. He gave a reward. It, it, for the for the for the Russian military to track down operators who aren't on public, mm. and he gave orders for all of their their. This is crazy. So Vladimir Putin on national TV, you can see him. He gives orders for 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 his military, putting a putting a, a bounty on American soldiers' heads, certain ones, but also. Activating all of his counter agents in American soil. I need all American uh, soldiers who are actually spies for us to 
just start attacking American citizens mm. for counterintelligence, right? Smart. I, I need you, and they, they don't understand. Like, I need you guys to start attacking each other. I need the yeah. military to start attacking each other. I need you guys to start attacking uh, uh, citizens so we can document this. And the fucking military went, yeah, this sounds like a great idea. Russia wants us to attack each other and kill American citizens. Everybody get behind it. Yeah. Right? And so, yeah. And so weird. As, as Russia was taking over to Crimea, they were also getting orders for, for the American military to attack their own citizens. That's fucking crazy. Not only are we taking over to Crimea, we actually gave orders for you guys to take each other out. Yeah. And people went, oh, who cares? It's bad. Our country's fucking bad right now. <laughs> oh, I agree. <laughs> like, people don't understand. I talk about it all the time, but people don't understand. Like, you fucking military taking orders from foreign countries? Your job, your order, your oath from the day one, protect American citizens and the lives and your soil, right? Yeah. It goes without, like, every day. That's your that's your oath, right? And you re-enlist, you got to do your fucking oath again. You sign that, that contract saying that you promised that. <laughs> and then when Russia says, uh, we don't actually want you to keep that oath. We want you to attack American citizens. We want you to rape children. Okay. And the fucking Airborne Rangers and the Marines were like, fuck yeah, Putin, we're on it. How many Americans, how many lives do you guys want stacked? We're on it. Right. It's like, fire. I got unconventional. Right? You can't prove that Vladimir Putin didn't say that. But what you can do is prove like, yeah, Vladimir Putin put a fucking uh, a, a, a bounty on Soldiers' heads, but what soldiers? Ones they didn't know existed. Yeah. Where the fuck do you find them? The bad soldiers, right? You need your spies. Mm -hmm. How do you, as Russia, how do you find a soldier that doesn't exist? Yeah. How do you? Huh. You need the airborne rangers. <laughs> you need the fucking marines, fucking sellouts. Yeah. For real, you need someone to sell you out, and they sell each other out every day for some fucking coke. Five dollars worth of cocaine, and the Marines will sell you out. Fifty cents, fifty cents worth of cocaine, the Airborne Rangers will sell you out. And once you get stuck in those situations, you imagine like it's just like they, they people get mad at me, but it's literally just an awakening for uh, you know the one guy who who's on my feet and decides to go to the military won't be caught in the dumb shit I speak about. I made one better soldier today. Mm -hmm. and th people don't understand that I speak about shit that really does happen they really fucking do this and nobody pays attention it's amazing yeah how, how do you know to watch out for something if you're like the whole point of going to the military is for training you right we're going to train you how to not get caught by the enemy and the person training you doesn't even have the ability to know how the enemy would track you uh -huh. Once it goes to enemy, we know we know today a lot of different government organizations and off the books mercenaries and things like that recruit from the Ranger Regiment, right? That's where everybody gets their men from. Well, crap! Can I just get those men as a criminal organization before they make it into the Ranger Regiment? Yeah. Right. You're, oh, you. you, you you're going into the, you're going into the air, whatever, Coast Guard, Navy, Ranger, whatever. Some hookers, some blow, some child prostitution. It cost me 200 bucks. It's a gamble. That's a, a $200 lottery ticket. In 10 years from now, five years from now, will you have a chain of command? We have a position where that $200 lottery ticket I spent on getting information from you plays out. Well, yeah, now you're an E7. You work on something for maintenance somewhere on something. Well, I just need to know when that chopper leaves, bro. Yeah. Can you do that for me? I won't tell anybody you had sex with kids and animals. All I need to know is when that chopper leaves. Who did they pick out of your unit to join Delta Force? What, Eric? You don't want to tell me? Do you remember that video of you choking out that little girl? Again, era of tech. How many people in your unit do you know made Delta Force? Other units. Now, Delta
Delta Force and SEALs, those are the units we talk about. Did anybody get taken to a unit that you don't even know the name of? They just fell off the books, kind of? Yeah. You don't want your son to see you raping a little kid? Well, again, I ask you, Era of Tech, Mr. 101st Airborne Ranger or whatever it is, the Wolfhound, whatever you guys want to fucking call yourselves, when is the chopper leaving? Right? I know you got to keep it on standby, right? But there's certain shit you got to pre-flight checks. Right? Just standby is standby, but pre-flight checks like fucking, hey, you're getting scrambled and shit is going out. When do you do that? A lot of corruption. Right? You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then you go, and then we go as a country. It's 2020. I think we're going to pull out of the Afghan war. Well, why not? Well, we can't win. Well, why? Well, these fucking ambushes keep happening, and we're losing bodies. Well, where are the ambushes happening? Well, on American soil. But we keep giving the co coordinates of Afghanistan. So our reinforcements and the backup isn't fucking getting where it needs to fucking be. We can't win a war. We, is it, we, we can't win a war. We just can't. The, the military just can't keep their fucking dick in their pants. <laughs> right? We can't win a war. You guys just can't keep fucking everything. <laughs> and that's sad. Like, how do you destroy the American military? From the inside out, with the flesh of animals. That's fucking gross. And it's real, though. How do you destroy the American military? From the inside out, with the flesh of children or the flesh of animals. What? That's some bullshit. No, watch. Like, yeah, no, watch. You just got to set it up like this. And this is from the Muslims and places. If you set it up like this with animals a certain way and some children, they just fucking go nuts. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to ask them to do anything bad. They just do it. In the name of Jesus, they just do it. You just sit back and record them and then let them all go home. They're going to start me over and over again, man. Bad it's so great. I mean, think about it. It's the fucking military. I'm like, I'm famous. Like, I'm a meme. For what? From the military trying to murder me over and over again. Huh. Look at that. Boop, boop. My AI. I'm fucking famous. In the, outside of the country. For the American military trying to assassinate me and turn me into a fucking suicide bomber to cover up their atrocities. That's what I'm fucking famous for. I got all kinds of information about the creator. And, 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 and evolutionary biology, the first key to human evolution, the very first key. Yeah. And I'm famous for, for, for the, the American military trying to turn me into a suicide bomber and doing a whole lot of rape and torture. So what was that about? Did you get involved with something bad? No, I, they're just bad people. I, I do it. So I don't know. You know, I have a lot of information. You know, and when, when you do work for helping women and children, bad people take advantage of women and children. You know, and, you know, the bad people are, you know, they fight harder. Yeah. I don't know how to explain that. I had a lot of good people in my life take care of me and, and, uh, they couldn't yeah. fight hard. You know, I don't know how to explain it, but there's more bad. I guess they don't fight harder. I shouldn't say there's just for every good guy, there's 10 bad ones. Right, and, you know, for every good guy, there's ten bad ones. So as a good guy, you take out four or five. There's still six more waiting in the shadows. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's bad. It's really bad. What do you What do you think the American military is doing? Like, what do you? you think I have no idea. Something? I just know right now that, that that every every soldier that's died right now is just looking down in disgust. Just disgusted. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. fucking disgusted. Right. Like, I fucking died for this? Can we imagine being a, 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 a soldier looking down right now? Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Like, you, I sacrificed my life for this shit? <laughs> exactly. I agree. You know? It, I, don't, I don't know. I do the same thing over and over again. They come torture me and I start over. And they don't understand. I don't fight back. 
you imagine that? Can you imagine that as an airborne ranger? You go, this kid doesn't fight back. Let's attack him to make ourselves look badass. That's embarrassing. Like Islam's like, this kid doesn't fight back. <laughs> like you know, King, like Martin doesn't fight back, and they're going to show up to try and get him to fight back. How far will they go? How bad will it get? Pretty fucking bad, mm-hmm. right? You think about that. Like you chose me because I don't fight. And because I had kidney failure and liver failure. So when you attack me as a ranger, you look really tough. But not when people realize I was fucking dying already. <laughs> it doesn't look as cool, does it? Yeah. Not when people find out you were threatening to murder some babies. You don't look as tough anymore as the military. You you attack somebody while they were half fucking dead and you threatened to murder their children if they retaliated and won. So th- you knew in these attacks you would come out the winner every time. You set it up that way. You would walk away looking like the winner? Yeah. Yeah, we did that. As the Marines and the Rangers, we set up a situation so we could win as a fucking unit. Right? The elite fighting machine, our cohesive units, we set it up so this elite fighting cohesive unit could win against Martin every time. Mm -hmm. But we had to game the system. We had to make sure his kidneys were failing, his liver was failing. He had an aneurysm, traumatic brain. We had to make sure he was dying. And when he was dying, it still wasn't working. So then we had to threaten to murder some babies. And just so he knew we were serious, we killed some people in real life. Just so he knows we're serious. Yeah, well, you seem like you recovered. Yeah. <laughs> I do it a lot. This one's happening. People don't understand. It happens a lot. Like I sit back and like, one time was a fluke. Two times, three times, like, we're looking on, like, 40 times different people, 40 different units from the military coming here and attacking me to cover up pedophilia and rape. It's starting to be not a fluke. It's a systemic problem, isn't it? Where are you from, anyways? Me? Oh, I'm from Kansas City. Nice. Yeah, in Missouri. I think I... uh, Toto was from Kansas. Toto? Like the, the, the musician? Where's the bomb? Oh, Toto. Right, right. Yeah. So my brain, I have a, I hold a b- bunch of weird, so again, um, Kansas. So I think of Kansas and I think of somewhere over the yellow brick road. Yes. Like when the sun sets, the sun yeah. of God in the sky, when it's setting, it creates a yellow brick road over the ocean. Somewhere over a rainbow at the end of the yellow brick road. Yeah, Dorothy. Yeah, like, like, they gave you a clue for the sun walking on water and leaving invisible footprints on the beach called Wizard of Oz. The biggest clue in history. Hey, guys, Wizard of Oz, somewhere over a rainbow at the end of the yellow brick road. What is a rainbow? A covenant that arcs. Seven seals, the Ark of the Covenant. Seven seals of Revelation, somewhere. And then you go, Todo. You can't see it, but your dog can, and it barks. Ta-da, Todo, ta-da, somewhere over a rainbow. At the end of the yellow brick road is the Creator. Yeah. Ta-da. If you can get it. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I appreciate I don't know why you listen to me. I appreciate it. <laughs> no problem. If you if you know the Chiefs, like the football. Yeah. Uh, football. I think they were changing uh, their team. name, but yeah. Yeah, they're playing today. Change. And that's the city I live in where they play. Nice. Mm-hmm. You big in football? Um I play a little bit, but I'm not on, on like a team, but I like watching it. Yeah. Nice. Where, where do you live? I live in uh, South Hill, Puyallup, Washington. Mm, nice. So South Hill, Washington. Really nice area. Got a lot of things. A lot of amenities. I yeah. guess. A lot of nature. Although I don't go out much without my wife. But Yeah, that's a good idea. Especially with Al and Jerry right on your ass. It, it's not just them, though. They got a whole military people coming in. This is so crazy. You imagine... Imagine being a kid in my neighborhood and you, you see the whole military and the FBI get involved trying to take someone's life without fucking mm-hmm. realizing it. You imagine? It's like, so imagine, I had some kids in my house and they showed up one time and they threw me in a barrel. Right. You imagine being a kid, because you get kids who aren't supposed to be on the record. You imagine being a kid hiding in my house and the FBI and the military show up to throw the people who are taking care of you from sex trafficking to throw mm-hmm. you in a barrel asking where children are. Like, say, you witness me be thrown in a barrel. You witness my wife be thrown in a barrel. You witness us be choked out and, and being, where are the kids? 
Yeah. And they're, these men might be doing it for fun. Right? They're just having a joke. Mm-hmm. Without realizing there's really kids going, oh shit. Oh shit. These are the guys that they were talking about? The FBI and the police? The Airborne Ranger? You know what I mean? Yeah. Now we get somewhere like, they're doing it for fun, and there's real kids going, oh fuck. It's the FBI. <laughs> it's the Airborne Ranger. Oh fuck. Now we get somewhere. My neighbor's Alan Jerry. Knowing there's women and children in my house, but the Airborne Rangers and the, and the FBI don't really know that in the beginning. So my neighbor's Alan Jerry setting up these situations for men to participate. And now we get somewhere. I keep saying, hey, we're recorded. And Jerry going, I don't want anybody to know about that. Yeah. Well, you, right? It was, you imagine as an Airborne Ranger or a Marine, you're doing something because somebody got you to participate in a joke. And then you hear a kid and you realize the joke was on you. You were being set up. The joke isn't on the person. You're, the, you think the joke is on me, but there's kids listening to what you do. The joke is on you. Right. You see what I'm saying? Like they got set the fuck up big time. Mm-hmm. And like, that's fascinating. Like, yeah, the joke's on me. Like what I really the, like, huh? What was the recovery process like from? It's a long recovery process because they do it all the time. Yeah. So, I, you know, the joke was on me. Right? But they were coming. It's it's a lot of stuff. I'm very, very, very careful because, I, you know, there's a lady, Courtney, or there's just some really bad people that keep trying to pretend that their process and their product heals me and shit like that. So I just jump through the ropes and, you know, mm-hmm. do it. But if you know, we find the right people, I'll pass on the right information. Yeah. That's the scary part right now. There's just a lot of corruption. Like everybody, literally people are like fucking money. Like we can rule the world. Even my brother one time, my brother Augustine was like, I knew you had the power. Scared the living shit out of me. My uncle, my, uh, my uncle in, in Sunnyside got hit by a car one time. Oh man. Yeah. He got hit by a car and, uh, yeah, he got hit by a car and, um, I kind of just woke him up a little bit. Yeah, and as people started asking him what go what what happened through the night, they said, "What happened?" I ran across the street and I got hit by a car. People asked him, "But what happened?" Like I just got hit by a car. The car hit me. He said, "What happened?" Well, Martin Martin woke me up. He shook me, woke me up. I was like I was knocked out. And as the night got on, he literally had a freak out. Oh, we have all the power in the world. Literally, the like my family had to tie him down. Like the police had to show up. He made him like, realize something. He, as the night kids, people kept asking him, like, what happened? He's like, Mark, I got hit by a car, Mark woke me up. And as, like, a few hours later, he was literally in the, in the, in the, in the streets with a sticks and shit, like, I can, I can conquer the world right now. I can end the planet. Like, I have the power to raise the dead, and I can do whatever I want. And I was like, this is embarrassing, I gotta go. Yeah. It was nuts. And it like, like, he was like, oh, I can raise the dead. Ah, I have the power to rule the world. I was like, fuck, my brother did that too. And some old men did that. Yeah. People are crazy. Yeah, it's a crazy situation. But, I don't know. And my, his wife died eating beetles. She tried, she got sick. She got cancer and she started eating beetles. And I remember speaking to her before she got, before I got really hurt. I talk about the chemical action behind Alpha Action, you know, uh, cryptography, Easter eggs. You know what Easter egg is in movies? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Beetlejuice, the chemical action behind Alpha Action, the sensation that built humanity's memorization, right? Your subconscious mind that holds your ability to heal yourself. You can't give it orders, right? You can't tell your subconscious mind, start healing something, start fixing something, can you? Yeah. But, but if, if there's an ability lying dormant in your epigenetics from your ancestors, maybe some Beetlejuice and a ketogenic state and some other things can turn it on for you. Mm-hmm. Bring you back from limbo. You don't remember who you are. You're sick. You're dying. Beetlejuice brought you back from limbo. Yeah. I, it just goes over people's head. They don't understand. Like like bugs, they make a smells. And the smells are res- like, they, they, it's responsible for your memories. Mm-hmm. And like sit with a neuroscientist and like that doesn't make any sense and I ask a neuroscientist okay you've been studying for 28 years you got a doctorate degree and PhDs now listen 
<laughs> my AI. <laughs> when you were a child learning to walk, did your mom sterilize everything you touched? And the neuroscientist tells me, no, they did not. So you crawled around when your parents went to the mall and shit like that. They stood and piss and shit of hundreds of people and then walked in the house and you touched your eyes, put it in your eyes and your mouth. They're like, yes, as a matter of fact, I did. This is so we know for a fact you got food poisoning at least 12 times as a child. Yep. When my immune system was the weakest, I was given food poisoning 12 times. And I go, what happened? Your memory developed? You developed the ability to remember after you got food poisoning? And the neuroscientists, they go, well, yeah, as a matter of fact, yeah. The more I walked around and the sicker I got, the more developed my memory came. And pretty soon when I no longer got sick anymore, because I had antibodies, I no longer forgot anymore. Oh, think about it. Wasn't that when you, when you no longer needed antibodies to create, you already had all the ones you need when the arsenal of your immune system had the proper depth and breadth to fight off the life around you, your brain woke up for memories. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. And today, if you, if you use household cleaners, remove the life that would give you food poisoning, you actually suffer memory loss. Hmm, Dementia and Alzheimer's? Somehow doesn't think surprise me. <laughs> but think of that. In order for me to have a memory to turn on, in neuroscience, I had to get sick before my memory turned on. And as I get old, to turn my memory off, I have to make sure I never get sick. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> and here I am, you're asking me about my recovery process. Yeah. All I did was get sick. <laughs> <laughs> so make, see what I'm saying? Yeah. I got sick when I was a baby to turn my memory on. Hmm. Hmm. And it just did it by itself. Right? It just did it by itself. I didn't tell my memory to turn on. It just turned itself on. Right? Just like when I was born, I took a shit for the first time. And I didn't tell myself to take it. And I'm sorry to talk about it. It's the only way to put things into perspective. When I was born, I, and you were born, right? You took a dump for the first time, right? right? Now, you didn't tell yourself to take a dump. Your body just went, it's time dump. to take a dump. <laughs> right? You think about that. You didn't tell yourself to take a dump when you were born. Your body just went, it's time. Right? You didn't tell yourself, it's time to remember. Mm -hmm. Your body just said, it's time. And I go, well, why did my body decide it's time to remember? Right. Well, we don't know specifically why, but we do know it happened because of these infections. These sicknesses. You know what? We don't know why specifically the exact chemistry behind why my memory turned on, but we do know it turned on because I was sick. As if I need to remember, don't put my hand in dog shit and put it in my mouth. I'll get sick. See what I'm getting at? I needed to remember that. Now, before we had houses, my parents wouldn't be telling me that. I would literally be rolling around on the hands, put my hands in some bear shit and rub my eye and go, well, fuck, now my eye's infected. I can't put my hand in bear shit and touch my eyes. I can't stick my finger in the ass of my cat as a four-year-old and then scratch my eye. And I'm, I, I, I do things because they, they stick in your brain. It's catchy, right? Yeah. You think about that. You did not, rem you didn't have, you didn't, you weren't required to remember not to do anything until after you were born. That's when you started doing dumb shit where you had to remember. And how did, what did you have to remember? Yeah. When the dog pisses in the grass, don't touch it and put my hands in my mouth. I'll get a stomach ache. <laughs> when a cow takes a shit in the field, don't go stomp on it, play with my shoes, and then rub my fingers through my hair and my face. I'll get sick. And it turned my memory on. I had to actually turn on my memory to remember that. But since you're not in those environments anymore, you don't know what actually turned on your memory, do you? Yeah. And there's the caveat. You're not in those situations anymore, so you don't know what actually turned on your memory. Mm -hmm. Which means if nobody knows how to turn on their memory, we can make money selling them the ability to remember themselves. I'll give you yourself back for $100 a month. <laughs> I'll give you a sliver of your own soul, your own soul, 
for three hundred dollars a month. Yeah, that reminds me of the retirement homes that tend to take money from the people with Alzheimer's because they can't remember what they bought and what they paid for and stuff like that. It's yeah, I do. I do the same thing. So I talk about you know I have a traumatic brain injury. It's the same thing as Alzheimer's. You want to know what companies are going to charge you over and over again for product? Mm -hmm. when, when you when you've already paid for it, follow me. Right, because when when I call somebody for a leak or something, or something happens, if they've already fixed it before, it's under warranty, right? Yeah. So you guys can watch who I call and who I deal with, and go, well, fuck, that's not the that's not an honest company, right? Mm -hmm. He paid for that to be fixed, and then he got a traumatic brain injury, and those same employees came out and did it again. <laughs> you see what I'm getting at? Yeah. And you guys, like I've done it, and people come out and go, you already paid for this. I don't remember. Well, it's in our records. You've already paid for it, so I'm not going to charge you again. Right. Well, that's interesting because the nine, nine other people in this sequence were like, "You can pay again," but you do get that one rare off going. I already, you already paid for this. Don't do it again. Uh -huh. and that's why I look for those people. That sucks. It's not. Su it's it, it sucks, but there's it's such a rare jewel. Yeah, you know those souls are like. One in, one in 50 million. Mm -hmm. You know, one in 50 million. Like somebody goes, you paid for that already. The last time you were hurt. And I'm like, what do you mean? Everybody says I wasn't hurt. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm like, well, whether, whether you were or you weren't, you already paid for it. Keep your money. Have a great day. Yeah. And other places are like, Rob, you're blind. And just smile. You sure I haven't met you before? You haven't been here before? Nope. Okay. Take, uh -huh. Fix whatever you want to fix and have a great day. Enjoy your enjoy your repeated business from taking advantage of memory loss. Yeah. But that's something for you to remember, though. You, you didn't have a memory until a virus and bacteria woke it up. Yeah. So if you need a virus and bacteria to wake up your memory... Would you need them to keep it awake? Uh -huh. And would you need them to bring it back if you ever lost them? If it was required in the first place, are they required to maintain it and are they required to bring it back? I don't understand how. I know I need it to, to have my memory. And if I get old enough, I can lose it. Yeah. What happens in those situations where people get old enough and it's been four years since this person got the right sickness that cleaned out their memory and turned it on. Yeah. But, yeah. Something to think about. Your memory. <laughs> yeah. You didn't have one until you got sick. So you can remember not to get sick. And this is where people go, I don't understand that. Your memory isn't there so you can put a smile on your face and keep you happy. It's for survival. Yeah. <laughs> The, 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 the more you remember that, the more you process that, the more you understand that, the further in life you're going to get. My memory is for survival. It means it's the strongest in survival. It's most sharpened in survival. Mm -hmm. Anything else, sir? Sorry for rambling. No, I'm, not. I'm, in, I'm enjoying being here. Thanks for having uh, me. <laughs> do, you have any other, do you have another question? We can change the subject. Mm, no, not really. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. God bless. Thank you for your kindness. I appreciate yep. it. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Bye.